Hi, welcome to another video in CE410 and for this video, we're gonna be solving again another problem regarding orifice. And for the those who didn't watch my video lecture in orifice, kindly click the link on the description below. Let's go! So this is the problem. Problem number four, determine the discharge at the orifice from the figure shown. So as you can see in the figure, that uh, it is a closed tank. So... Inside the tank, there is a partition separating two chambers. So let's denote this as chamber number one, and this one is chamber number two, and the tank is filled with water. So I forgot to write water here. So the tank is filled with water. So since the tank is closed, there is an input gauge pressure inside the tank. So for the first chamber, um, the input gauge pressure or the air pressure or the pneumatic pressure is rated at 40 kilopascals while on the second chamber the input gauge pressure is rated at 20 kilopascals so as you can see also that there is an existing head of water at the first chamber so from the orifice up to the liquid surface the head is 4 meters while at the second chamber the head from the orifice up to the liquid surface is 2 meters. Now, what we need to solve is the discharge. And since C or the coefficient of discharge is given, then we can compute for the actual discharge. Let's go! So now let's compute for Q sub A. So, or the actual discharge at the orifice, that's cow or coefficient of discharge times cross sectional area of the orifice times the square root of 2G times uppercase H. So, as I always say, that uppercase H always depends on the existing energy that triggers discharge at the orifice. Now, since we have two compartments here, chamber 1 and chamber 2, then there are also two energy heads involved so as you can see uh, chamber number one has the higher head than chamber number two so in this case we need to determine the difference between the total energy head of the upstream reservoir minus the total energy head of the downstream reservoir so if you're gonna ask me sir what is the basis on how we can decide whether which is the upstream reservoir or the downstream reservoir so let's inspect first on the figure so since chamber number one has the higher head of water compared to chamber number two and chamber number one has the greater pressure than chamber number two then we can conclude that chamber number one is the upstream reservoir so the upstream reservoir has the greater energy head compared to the downstream reservoir let's go so if we use this formula without inspecting on the figure whether which is the upstream or the downstream reservoir so there's no problem about that because if we assume that for example chamber one is the upstream reservoir then the result became positive then our assumption is correct while if we got a negative answer then our assumption is wrong because we can't write negative value here in the formula because this is a radical sign and the answer will become imaginary let's go so now let's compute for the value of uppercase h so that's the difference between the energy heads of the upstream reservoir and the downstream reservoir so for the upstream reservoir the total energy head comprises of the input gauge pressure so that's the pressure head e sub 1 over gamma plus the head of the water so that's h sub 1 minus for chamber number 2 that's p sub 2 over gamma plus h sub 2 so for this one that's 40 kPa since the pressure is in kPa we're using 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter plus so 
the head of the water at chamber 1 minus input gauge pressure in KPA over 9.81 kN per cubic meter plus so let's compute for the value of H so uh -huh, uh -huh. let's use the calculator so that's So, the difference in energy head between upstream reservoir and downstream reservoir is 4. Point. So, that's 4.0387 meters. So, since we're gonna use this H on our working equation, then let's store this at A. Let's shift store A. So, gonna write down here A. Now, so let's plug in the values in our working equation. That's Q sub A is equal to C. So, C is given 0 0.95 times the cross-sectional area of the opening of the orifice. So, that's pi times D. So, the diameter is 32 millimeters, so that's 0 0.032 in meters square over 4 times the square root of 2 times 9.81 times the stored value at A, which is H. So let's compute for the actual discharge. The actual discharge is 6.8012 times 10 to the negative 3. So, the unit is in cubic meters per second. So, this is, again, the actual discharge of water or flow rate here at the orifice. Let's go! So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and see you on the next video. Let's go!